Hi, boys and girls. Um, today we're going to do some art based on the work of Joseph M. Dokpo. And we are going to start with some lines. And what you're going to be using to make the lines are Sharpies. A skinny one is probably good, but the fat one's also good. Or a even a black pen. And you could probably use um, any other kind of fine marker. You could even use a Crayola marker if that's all you've got at home. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to choose the small Sharpie to start with. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make two shapes. And you notice I'm not using my ruler. Please don't use your ruler. Now we're going to make two shapes on the page. And it doesn't matter what the shapes are. And it doesn't matter where you put the shapes. So I'm going to put a triangle here. And you notice I'm not filling the page and I didn't get worried that I made a little mistake because I can fix it later. And I am going to put a rectangle here. All right, so that's our first step. So everyone's got two marks. Now what I'm going to do is three places on the paper. I'm going to start on one side and I'm going to make um, part of a shape that goes to another side. So it's almost like the artwork is going off the page. And we know from um, what we've done in class that that's always a good idea to have something to create interest by going off the page. So I'm going to do one here and it's gonna go all the way to this side of the page. I'm going to do one here. And I'm just gonna actually make it go right off the page. I'm going to do a partial circle here and I am going to do a circle here. So all you want to do, it doesn't matter what kind of shapes that you do, they can be circular, they can be um, just straight lines, it doesn't matter what kind of shapes you do around the outside just as long as they touch the corners. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fatter sharpie, if you have something skinnier you can use that too and I'm going to go over my lines to make them a bit thicker. My table is really slidey here, so I'm not perfect. I'm not going to worry about that. I would fill this in to make it a bit better. There, see, I'm hiding my mistakes. Mistakes are good. There's sometimes opportunities to make something even better. All of you beautiful children know that. And you could even go over these twice. I'm just going to do it once because I want you to get the idea of what you do. But you will obviously be taking your time when you're doing this. The next thing we've done after we do that is I'm going to go back to my small marker and I'm going to do some bisecting lines to make it a lot more interesting on the page. And so I'm just gonna go in between shapes to divide them up a little bit. And you could even make some of these round, round shapes. And I think we need something over here to divide that up. All right, so I've got a lot more spaces. And again, you can go over that with a skinnier, another skinny line maybe to make it different. We wanna have a different, different types of lines. We wanna have fat ones and we wanna have skinny ones. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna write our names in the artwork. And you wanna write your first, your middle, and your last name. You can also, if you don't want to write your name, you can write your family member's name. You could do something for Mother's Day and write your mother's full name somewhere in the artwork. So what I want you to do is find a space. I'm actually going to divide that one. And I'm going to write my first name. And you might want to do this in pencil first if you're not sure about um, fitting your, your name nicely into that section. I am going to write my last name here and you can see I'm I'm making some extra spaces all 
and I'm going to do my middle name somewhere. Oh, I'm going to do it here. And I'm going to use all capitals for this. Okay, so I've got my name in all three spots. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, make some extra spots bolder. So you might want to go over your name. Or you can just choose one or two parts of your name. If you're gonna do family members, don't forget your pets. That would be a nice family picture to hang up somewhere in your house. If you don't feel like you have the right materials to do this because you're at home, what you might wanna do is um, keep this activity in your back pocket because you can always do it again and use different materials. Okay, so I want to do, I'm gonna do this one bold. You don't have to do all of the lines bold. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a lot of uh, lines to fill in the shapes because that's going to um, create repetition and repetition of the line designs will make your piece seem active and create unity. So you just pick a shape and one design in that spot. Marker's not working too well. So in this one, I'm going to make straight lines and I might even go in between and fill them even closer because that'll look more interesting and you just take your time to do this and then any time if you get lost for ideas you can go back and look at the first video to see how the artist did that as well. Might do almost like a frill on this one. And there I'm repeating the semicircular design that I've got on there. And I am going to repeat it because repetition creates unity. It's one of the things that can create unity. Okay. So there are five line designs that you can include um, more than once in the shape spaces of your artwork. First of all, you should do lines that are close together and thin. You should do thick lines that are far apart. You should do small smirk circles in a line. Um, you can do some cross hatching, so I can show you that here. We've done it before in class and cross hatching would be to go across other thin lines with more thin lines. So you could go straight across like that and don't do two on yours, but you can also go on the diagonal like that. Um, the other thing that you want to do, you should do bumpy lines. They're drawn along a straight or curvy line such as I've done here. And you should probably try out each of those design ideas because those are going to create repetition in your work. And repetition will add to the unity of the piece and it will create movement on the page as your eye follows all of the lines. When you have finished drawing and filling all of your spaces in with your um, design and line ideas, what you're going to do is you're gonna color the sections in with either pan watercolors, if you have those at home. If you don't have those, you can use pencil crayons. You could try markers, it might be, or crayons, both of those could work. Um, if you have um, 
bigger spaces on your artwork. So just try it out and see what you can come up with and maybe you will um, take this artwork into consideration when you're planning something else for a gift for someone.